Welcome to TexasRoadTravel.com. I'm your host, Rosalind Vaughn. Come travel with us through the great state of Texas, because as you know, everything is bigger in Texas. For the next few weeks, we'll be traveling through the Prairies and Lakes area down Texas Highway 6. So you ask, what's the Prairies and Lakes area? Well, it's from Dallas, Fort Worth, all the way to College Station. First stop, Calvert, Texas. Come on, share Texas with us. Welcome to Texas Road Travel with Rosalind Vaughn. Travel with us through the great state of Texas, from the Panhandle to the South Texas Plains, from Big Bend Country all the way to the Piney Woods. Fly with us by air to Hill Country, Prairies and Lakes, and to the Gulf Coast. We're traveling all through Texas. Take long drives and stroll the countryside with Texas Road Travel. Find your favorite watering hole and fun in the sun. All the way to the state capitol. Come share Texas with us. We're Texas Road Travel. Texas Road Travel is brought to you by RNL Properties, your home away from home. Catch them online at rnlproperties.com. And by Red Sea Television. Join Chris and Russ, the coolest guys on the net, at redc2.com. Calvert, Texas in Robertson County, population 1426, was founded by Robert Calvert in 1868. Calvert once was flat land, but it's now full of trees and tons of history. We go on our quest to find out all about this town only 3.9 square miles in radius that have beautiful Victorian homes and tons of chocolate. We're at the historic Pin Oak Bed and Breakfast. Let's go inside and meet the Qualls. So I'm with Walter and Jenny Qualls of the historical Pin Oak Bed and Breakfast. And they're going to give us a little tour and tell us what's going on. Right. Well, right now you're in the library. Okay. And uh, the paneling is original to the wood. The ceiling is a reproduction uh, produced by an architect here in town, Richard Lussier. And this is where we spend most of our time. Uh, the, the furniture is a collection of uh, furniture from all our family. Uh, you move into a home with 17 rooms, all of a sudden you don't have enough furniture to fill it up. So wow, 17 your rooms. family volunteers furniture too. That's cool. And, uh, so it makes a very comfortable home. We move into our entry hall, which would be, so this is a very large entry. Most people don't have homes this. And also the most expensive furnishings would, would, would oftentimes be in, in the entry. Okay. The most expensive thing when the house was built was this mantle. And it was $39. Wow, $39. It's, it's hand carved wood. And um, it's made by Outlaws Our Shallow Fireplace. It's one of five in the house. Okay. And they're coal burning. We had two coal wires, one north of town, one south of town. That's wonderful. There are no trees in Calvary. Very few. Uh, mm -hmm. This was prairie. You know, the, this was just after the period of um, large herds of bisons and stuff. And you, you really, in this part of the country, you didn't have trees. They just they grew in, in little groups where they were protected because they had to get a couple feet high before the bison got to them. That was that's unique. Anyway, let's go this is the most important room in the house. This okay. is a drawing room. The drawing room. What do you think everybody does in the drawing room? Draw. No. <laughs> To be a proper drawing room, it had to be off of the entry hall okay. and separated by a door. Okay. That way they could close off from the people that were coming to visit. It had to be off the dining room, also separated by a door. Lucky me not to have breakfast with us in the morning. This is our breakfast table. Okay. Um, the, the chandelier is crystal out of Czechoslovakia. And um, the oldest piece of furniture is the armoire in the corner. Just I wanted to how large the back porch is, and there's a reason for that. No air conditioning. I it's should very sit out hot. here all day. And they serve their meals three, nine months out of the year here. In the back, that white structure right across the street. We have a lot of weddings where the weddings will take place at the uh, pavilion, and okay. then the reception 
will be held here. How many historic homes are there in Calgary? 61 structures. Uh, it's about 40 homes. Okay. And there's some businesses and some churches, but there's 61 structures on the uh, na National Historic, well, on the Texas Historic Register. Two of those are on the National. I'd like to I thank enjoy. you, thank you for so coming much and for us. letting me come over and to thank visit you your home. Thank you for with us. And we were visiting with the Qualls, and we'll be back on TexasRoadTravel.com. When in the Dallas area, Texas Road Travel's home away from home is Southern Living Homes by r and Properties. Enjoy a spacious five-bedroom house with all the amenities of home, but not at the hotel price. Give Diane a call at 817-689-5782 or catch them on the web at rnlproperties.com. That's 817-689-5782 or rnlproperties.com. Southern Living Homes, your home away from home. Tell you a little bit about the history of the parish house. The house was built in 1894. It's a mail order house. It came on Crossbed Railroad from Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, and um, it came out of a, it was ordered out of a out of a catalog called uh, Country Souvenirs, Cottage Souvenirs, rather number two, by George F. Barber. So the the, the important part of the history is well, one of the important parts is that it was ordered from George F. Barber who made a mark in Queen Anne architecture at the turn of the century. Yeah. So and this is, this, there are seven of this particular house left in the United States, that's all. And this, this, is... this particular plan. So that's what we're working with. Everything in the house pretty much, for the most part, and I'll, I'll point out where it's not original, but everything is, is original. This house is in book after book after book after book as an example of Queen Anne architecture, and I'll show you some of the pictures. All right, this is the entrance, um, this uh, uh, kind of a modest entrance, actually. In the dining area, B and Bill point out that the gas lights are authentic gas lights, as throughout the entire home from the 1800s. The kitchen was an added feature when the home was made into a bed and breakfast. The original floor plans of the home had been altered, but B has done everything possible to restore it back to its original settings. Bill gave me a little more history on the original owners, the parishes, and what they did for a living. This is their phone number, a three digit phone number, 120 wow. Calvert, Texas. Isn't that neat? And the same family. Could you give me 120, please? Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's a, a and that's like the phone that, right that they used oh, to use. Oh, look at the phone. There you right go. There. Oh, let me call. I'm going to call everybody. You're going to call 120? <laughs> uh, you're going to need your calling card. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that Excuse me. Yes, yes. Can I have 120? I need, I need that's, a little company. That's it. <laughs> How cool. Can I have Red Sea television, please? Just Red Sea. Oh, okay. Oh, it doesn't exist, sorry. <laughs> See the extended version of the parish home tour and all the Victorian homes at TexasRoadTravel.com. Looking for a new home in the North Texas area? We'll call Valerie Alfred Realty Group. With over 10 years of exceptional service in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, they will take care of all your housing needs. Give them a call at 972-961-7438, 972-961-7438, or visit them online at ValerieAlfredRealtyGroup.com. Valerie Alfred Realty Group, your perfect realtors to find your perfect home. Checking out the historical Hammond House built in 1876. Come on, let's go in. Why, hello. How are you? I'm doing fine. And your name, please? Bill Martin. Hi, Bill. My name is Rosalind from Texas Hi. Road Travel. We would love to find out about your beautiful Hammond House. Well, come on in. I'll show you around. Okay. This house was built in 1876 to serve as the jail for Robertson County. The county seat had uh, just been moved to Robertson County. 
Uh, and the first thing they did was they built a jail here. Not a courthouse, but a jail. Wow, even though the historical marker says courthouse? The historical marker says courthouse. All my uh -huh. life I thought it was a courthouse, but that turns out to be not entirely true. Okay. In fact, completely wrong, as a matter of fact. Um, and I'm not sure how it changed from being a courthouse to, I mean, a jail to a courthouse, but I think it has to do with my great grandmother who bought it in 1909. Okay. And she kind of came for money, you know, and I think she was, didn't so much like the idea of living in a jail, and she liked the idea of being a courthouse instead. Okay. So, you know, she, you kind of hear what you want to hear and believe what you want to believe. So, I think at some point she just made the conversion from jail to courthouse. Okay. But jail is what it was. Okay. And, and it took me a long time to convince myself that that was the case. But looking at the records and looking at the way it was built, I finally came to the real estate. Yeah, it was built in the jail. So that's where, that's how I got started. Now about 10 or 15 years after it was built, the county seat moved again. This is okay. the fifth time for Robertson County to have a, a new county seat. It was moved to Franklin. And the first thing they did in Franklin was build a new jail. Uh, they took their jail seriously back then. They didn't have a courthouse at all, but they built their jails, you know. And the jail that they built in Franklin was pretty much exactly like the way this one was built, it was laid out just the way that this was built. And the way they worked back then, is that the, the jailer, usually the sheriff, would uh, live in the front part of the building and okay. then the prisoners were kept in the back part of the building. Was that upstairs when I saw outside? Uh, no, there was a, originally when this was a jail, the front of the building had two stories okay. and the back of the building where the prisoners were was about a, one, one and a half stories. Okay. So what you're seeing here, right here, in these rooms were the jailers, or the sheriff's quarters, and that's where they lived. So this would have been the, the sheriff's main living quarters, okay. uh, and he lived here with his wife, presumably, and the wife would cook the meal for the prisoners, and the sheriff would keep his eye on them. And this is, like I said, typical of the way that jails worked at the turn of the century. You had the sheriff li living here as one of the perks of his job is that he got to live there. When it, when it was a jail. Okay. And this was about one and a half stories tall. Okay. And the way it worked is they had six cells in here. There are three across, stacked two high. And should, there's little stairs went up right there that got you to the second level, level of, the, of the cells. And this, I left here this open to sort of uh, show, should I move this? No, leave it right there. Everything's just fine. Right. So this, uh, I left this open to show the, uh, a couple of things, in particular the outline of one of the original jail windows. They okay. weren't these big, elegant windows we have now. They were small well, jail windows because they didn't want people breaking out of them. And um, this window, a couple of these windows they actually took out and moved them to the kitchen building and you can still see the, uh, the holes in the frame where the bars went. And we can go out here. Uh -huh. Maybe I should talk about how it became a hotel, okay. that part of the history. So after it ceased being a jail, they didn't need it as a jail anymore, a fellow named Andy Faulkner bought it and turned it into a hotel. Okay. And he added the big windows downstairs and he added this building uh, to be used as the kitchen downstairs and the hotel managers, a couple of ladies, the Knight Sisters is all I know about them. The they, Knight they, Sisters, did they come The Knight they... Sisters. Uh, and it was called the Park Hotel. I assume because it's next to the right Virginia okay. Fields. Were stuff mostly that I just found around the uh, the property, or things that sort of gave uh, some sort of insight as to how things were made. This brick, for example, the bricks on this building were made locally at a kiln here, which you can still see the remnants of it <clears throat> outside on the edge of town. And I don't think they were very good at making bricks when they made it because a lot of them they weren't cooked long enough and they're real soft and a lot of them were overcooked when you when you get these bricks too hot they start turning to glass and so that's what that is wow bricks turn to glass I didn't know turn that. to glass yeah and so throughout the whole building you can see uh how these how some of these bricks were just overheated in the kiln you can see there how they were stacking the bricks and probably a couple of bricks set up against that which kept that part from 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 burning and turning to glass like that 
So I kept that out because I just thought. So much for giving us a tour of your home. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in Calvert soon. I hope you will come back. Okay. It's a great little place. Thank you so much. And you can catch more of this on TexasRoadTravel.com. Go! Come on! Go! 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 Cut! All right, Jason. 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 Back it up. We'll pick up the two shot with the crane. You know us. Maybe you've seen our shirts. Or maybe our van around town. If you hadn't, get the RedC2.com today. Check us out. So on our way to Calvert, we got a little hungry. And with all the beautiful historical places we saw, we ran into Kokomoda. And we wanted to see what this place was all about. So come on, let's go in. Hello, Rosalind. Hi, Welcome to Kokomoda. Welcome, thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Could you tell me about your lovely establishment? Uh, but first of all, I think uh -huh. you ought to change into a well down uniform. Wonderful. Okay, so I'll get you a jacket. Hold on two seconds, and I shall be back to you. There we are. Now you'll look the Kokomoda family style, eh? There we are. Okay, now you are now Auntie Rosalind. Yay! <laughs> there we are. Now I'll let you do up the rest of the buttons. But now, as you can tell, this, this is an old building. Okay. It was built in 1874 as the Calvert State Bank. Okay. And uh, when we took it, it, it had a lot of different rooms in it. The original floor was concrete. Did you find some old money in here too? We wish. <laughs> Actually, there is a story about that. Okay. Um, you know, as I say, the, the, the uh, floors were the original concrete. We put this hardwood floor in. Beautiful. Did a lot of remodeling. Okay. The story about the money is that in the back, which is now the kitchen, okay. um, my guys found. Dunk, dunk, dunk. They found a cellar. Wow. And a trap door. Okay. And what was in there? Nothing. <gasps> we didn't even find a house. Because, for sure, having been a bank, they would have never left anything in there at all to deliver the thing. And my guys were determined to get in there and I said, no, if you're willing to pay the costs of rebuilding the whole, the whole floor and you come off of the time clock, you can do it. Okay. None of them were that, were that venture, so we didn't find out. So, anyhow. Your establishment is so beautiful, so could you tell me uh, some more about thank it? You so much, of course. Um, you know, these, uh, the tin ceilings are original. Okay. Um, one of the things that, of course, when we, when we first came here, you couldn't see very much of, this, of the tin ceiling. Okay. And that was a really big feature. We did a lot of work to it, of course, as I've already outlined. There was one single door in the front there. And Naturally, you know, being such an imposing bank building, it would have had two. Because the thing that, that attracted me to this building more than anything else was the fact that you could actually airlift, well, if it were physically possible, you could airlift this building, put it in the middle of any major city in the world, Paris, New York, you could put it in London, and it would fit. Wow. It would absolutely be the European look. And uh, so that's one of the reasons that I chose this building and, and the first thing, of course, coming to Calvert was that I fell in love with this building. So um, how long have you been in Calvert? Well, we actually bought the buildings three years ago. It took okay. us a long time to do the, to do the build out and eventually we opened in September. And it was very important to me that we actually opened this and I'll show you later the factory across the road where we actually make the canvas. And it looks so good. Thank you. Could you tell me about it? Yes, of course. We have, um, we have uh, coconut here. We make that, make that with coconut and make a ganache with white chocolate for the sensors. We actually make the, the little um, truffle 
shells themselves. Then we fill those with the with the garage. In this case, in this case, we've got of course the, the coconut. While Chef Ken continues to enlighten me about the wonderful chocolate in the restaurant, I was curious to see how all the delicious chocolate was made in the chocolate factory. So don't touch that dial. And we'll be back with more Texas Road Travel right after this. Let's go! Come on! Go! 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 go. Ah! Cut! All right, Jason, Jason, yep. Jason. Back it up with the crane. Two shot. We'll pick up the two shot with the crane. You know us. Maybe you've seen our shirts. Or maybe our van around town. If you hadn't, get the RedC2.com today. Check us out. Well, here's the production side of Kokomoda. And Ken is going to tell us all about how they make chocolate stuff. Take no. it away. There's various different ways to make the chocolates. With our chocolates, what we do for the truffles is we actually form the center. And you've seen a couple of those centers. They're roundy things. And I'll show you in a little while over at the other side one or two of them. Okay. And we fill them with a ganache. And the ganache is, of course, chocolate-based. And it can either be dark chocolate, milk chocolate, or white chocolate. That sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rosalind. Um, many of them are made with fresh fruits. And what I do for those, for instance, with the raspberry, um, take fresh raspberries, boil them, no sugar, um, pass them through a sieve, and then with that passed raspberry, put it into white chocolate, that is the ganache that I that I form to fill the centers with, with the uh, with the raspberry pulp that's left over. I dry it without coloring it. It takes a couple of days. Pound it to a powder, add sugar to it, and coat the outside of the of the little truffle. I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Some of your chocolates. Okay. So anyhow, as I was saying, here are the little shells that we make. Okay. This is a white chocolate shell. And you can tell that we put a hole in it. In it. Oh. That's a dark chocolate one. And just White reaching chocolate. behind you, this is the milk chocolate one. And milk chocolate. There we are. <laughs> now then, the milk chocolate one. I've already described the raspberry one, but this is a milk chocolate one. It's filled with hazelnut butter. And hazelnut butter is basically uh, roasted hazelnuts. Okay. You make. You do the roasted hazelnuts to one side, you do a caramel to another side, blend the two together to make a butter, and fill this, this shell here with it. And this shell here with it? And then you put a little... So Chef Ken gave me a quick crash course in learning how to make his world famous chocolate. I'm just living in here. I'm going to live in the chocolate factory. Good, just that's remember good. that I'm going to okay. live in the chocolate factory. I do have a corner over there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're in light for that. Um, so they're infused overnight in the cream. Okay. The cream is boiled. We put it, we pass it. We then put that into a dark chocolate. Okay. Um, normally a 66%. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, at the moment, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people saying, oh, the higher the percentage. The reality is that you get to a percentage with chocolate where it becomes rather like putting cocoa powder on a spoon, lightly dusting it with sugar and then eating it. And who amongst us wants to do that? There's not very many. And so you get the guy saying, I ate a 90% today. Well, jolly good. But how about you eat two or one and a half, 66% that actually tastes nice? Does the same job for you. We've already proved with the AMA that it's better than red wine. For the heart, chocolate and, is always better and than gentle mother, the it heart. is wonderful for the female libido, by the way, and that is a medical fact. <laughs> um, this is the praline. Praline in New Orleans, I understand, is what I call butterscotch. Um, wow. In Europe, praline is hazelnuts and milk chocolate. This is hazelnuts and milk chocolate. Is. I'm going to try this one as well. Oh, of course, please do. Mm -hmm. My love. I really am. 
I'm just going to just take the whole well, plate do, please. and I'm running away. There we are. My little corner back over there. Back over there. That's my spot. <laughs> That's See behind corner. the door right there? That's my spot right now with all the chocolate. So I'm just curious with all the chocolate that you sell, mm -hmm. how much do you like sell in a year's time? How much chocolate do does goes through Kokomoda in a year's time? About 150 million pounds. No. <laughs> Seriously. I can't though, believe it. I it's, have to have right here. <laughs> we've already already got into the several tons this year tons. since yeah. Just this year. Wow. Um, tons. We'll get up to the 10, 15 ton mark um, hopefully by the end of the year wow um and then it's just a case of okay, and we'll be back back with texas road travel right after this looking for a new home in the north texas area we'll call valerie alfred realty group with over 10 years of exceptional service in the dallas fort worth area they will take care of all your housing needs give them a call at 972-961-7438 972-961-7438 or visit them online at ValerieAlfredRealtyGroup.com Valerie Alfred Realty Group, your perfect realtors to find your perfect home. When in the Dallas area, Texas Road Travel's home away from home is Southern Living Homes by r and Properties. Enjoy a spacious five-bedroom house with all the amenities of home, but not at the hotel price. Give Diane a call at 817-689-5782 or catch them on the web at r Properties.com. That's 817-689-5782 or rmlproperties.com. Southern Living Homes, your home away from home. Special thanks goes to the Calvert Chamber of Commerce, members of the historical homes, and all the aunties and uncles at Kokomotas. So join us next week as we continue our quest to find the healing waters in Marlin, right here on TexasRoadTravel.com. Take 35. <laughs> go Queener! Go Queener! Go Queener! Go Queener! Oh my God, I see the shop. Oh my God. As we... Wait a minute, I just forgot everything.